It sure keeps the sheen Most entertaining channel you've ever seen He's always making lots of interesting scenes For you to watch on YouTube Well, we're back out in the shop this time, folks. All components have arrived, and we're about ready to get this amp built. In this episode, Craig provides an overview of the various components that go into a custom tube amplifier. Then he gets busy prepping the board and chassis for reuse. If you've been watching this whole series, you already know I did quite a bit of guitar playing last episode. I had a blast, too. But we're in the final stretch on this build, and I can't wait to get finished up so I can get back to jamming, but this time with my new amp. So Craig, are we good to go for reusing the chassis? Yeah, it, it looks like everything just lays out just perfect. I mean, we've got short wire runs going every to, to each tube socket. We don't have to be concerned about heat on any capacitors or anything because it's all going to rise through here. Uh, finishing touches, we got some cream colored knobs here, which are um, going to look nice with that cabinet, I think. Um, and then we've got our little standoffs. That's what the board is going to sit on is these little quarter inch standoffs. And then we've got carling switches for the front panel for your um, power on and your standby switch. Um, we're using alpha pots for um, the controls. And then we've got switchcraft jacks. These jacks are just a lot more robust than that little board that came stock in the Marshall. And then here's, um, here's the little turrets that go onto the board and we'll go into that more later. Um, here's your tube sockets. Um, we got some really nice belt-in sockets. They're, they're really top-notch in my opinion. They're the best ones. Um, so there's the ones for your 12AX7s. And then here's the ones for your, for your um, 6L6s. And then I don't know if we're gonna actually need the tube shields, but these ones are pretty nice. They come with them. Kind of an assortment of Zycon caps, and then these box capacitors, um, and then we've got a silver mica cap um, for the for the tone stack, and then we've got our power supply electrolytics, and then our little teeny um, uh, cathode bypass caps. So. Um, these are Illinois caps, um, pretty standard stuff. And then the, um, the cathode by bypass caps are Nishikons. I, I opted to go with um, all metal film resistors. Mm -hmm. A lot of your um, tube fanatics, me included, um, have kind of gone back and forth between the whole, is carbon comp really better tone? Is uh, carbon film, a good kind of in-between, so you get kind of the best of both worlds. Um, but what I, f what I find is these make a beautiful sounding amp. I can't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you one thing is there's not as much noise with these. As far as tone goes, I'm not really sure that there's anything to that. But, you know people would probably disagree with me and that's fine. Yeah. You know? Cause I, I've been on the disagreeing side before. It's like, oh, you gotta use, you know, cause that's what, what all the great sounding amps have in them. Yeah. Not true. A lot of your hand wired marshals from back in the day, they were using metal film resistors back then. So, uh, one thing with uh, the old carbon comp resistors is um, they burn number one, cause they're carbon. Um, and number two, they drift all over the place with heat and cold and humidity and the elements. Mm -hmm. So they're all over the place. They aren't as stable as these are. So we've got our front panel light here that we're gonna use a little square red LED thing. Here's our silicon that we're gonna be using. We've got our bridge, our, uh, bridge rectifier here. I like to use the single unit instead of um, separate, um, separate diodes in the configuration of a bridge rectifier, which is what this particular transformer requires because there's, no, um, there's no center tap on the high voltage secondary. So we're stuck with that. No tube rectifier on this build. I think what we should move on to now is uh, drilling the many holes that we have to drill on this board. Right, the board. And speaking of the board, how do you figure out what component goes where anyway? Um, I use a, pro a program called um, PCB Express. Yeah, 
and you um, basically make your little library components, which you know I've I've drawn all of these with the program, and and then you store them, and then it's like I want a 12ax7 tube socket, and you just go into the component manager, and you've got your 12ax7 tube socket, and then and then you've got a tool that you can you know. Uh, attach all of your wires to all of your posts. I will compare my drawing after I'm done to make sure um, that I've gotten everything, that I don't have something accidentally hooked up in the wrong place. The little pink marks right here are just spots that I missed. So I'm gonna go back into the program and um, tidy that up. While Craig busily worked away on drilling the board, I asked him if he could give some insight as to why he uses a board rather than direct point-to-point -point wiring in his amp builds. Yeah, some people refer to this as point-to-point, -point, but it's really not. It's You can really think of this as just being akin to a, to a printed circuit board. The premise is all the same. Point-to-point -point is really kind of a an art in itself. I kind of prefer this method as opposed to uh, as opposed to the true point-to-point -point wiring because um, it allows you to be able to pull components off. You know, maybe this one's got a little too much mid-range, and I know I know which caps I can change to take care of that. Mm -hmm. um, so it allows you to be able to kind of work on it a little bit easier. Being able to, to pull any of those components that were down towards the bottom out of there, nope. Once you've got everything stacked up, uh, three layers on top of it, you, there's no getting to it without tearing it back apart, mm -hmm. which w just wasn't something I wanted to do. And not something I want to do on one of the amps that I make, especially if it's going to be for someone else. Um, yeah. Because if they need to bring it back to me, I don't want to have to undo the entire thing to get to one little component. You're not going to notice a tonal change. Um, I, I really don't know if there is or not. I mean, it's, it's kind of like the, the whole debate of carbon comp resistors versus carbon film versus metal film resistors. Unless you've got exactly the same exact circuit um, one built with, you know, the carbon comps, one built with the metal film, and put them side by side, you're really not going to know any difference. And then, and then when you factor in all of the tolerances, they're, you know, uh, I think those metal films are 5%. So you've got a 5% tolerance one way or the other. That's going to change things too, to a slight degree. All it really matters is how it sounds. And so that's, that's what we go for. We go for um, a good sounding amp, um, a quiet amp, and something that's virtually indestructible. I mean, for instance, if I needed to replace one of these caps that's going to go right here, um, what I'd need to do would be to pull the stuff off the front, front panel and then um, undo my, my securing bolts. That hold, that hold it onto the um, onto the standoffs, and then I can just flip it up like this inside the chassis, and I can get my soldering iron underneath. Boom, out, new one in. Boom, you're done. Mm -hmm. Solder it back in, drop it back in, bolt everything back into the front of the chassis, and away you go. And I just wanted to make sure that my holes line up here, so I dropped it into these holes, and it it comes out perfect. 
these set in there are really nice. And um, I usually just drop a little piece of silicone right there and just kind of squeeze it on and then it'll stay. Craig uses his jigsaw to take a small slice off the board to thin it out to fit the chassis a little better. Actually, before I peel it off, I want to make sure that I mark the bottom side so I don't... So this is power, and this is pre. That way I know that I'm, I'm working on the bottom side when I start staking these things oh, in. Important. I can take this and just um, stick it to my work table. So while I'm soldering it, I might, I might refer to it. Alright, so now I need to figure out what size hole I'm drilling here. I think it's it fits just perfect. There it's gonna stick up probably about this far. I'm gonna pre-wire most of this stuff so that I don't have to, you know, try and get my soldering iron in at some wacky angles. Let's see the dimples sticking out there. So what I'll do is I'll come back with a, um, a small drill bit, get a pilot hole going in there. There's two holes though that I did not drill. Oh, that's right. There's this one here. Um, yeah, I got it turned right. And then there's one right here that I need to drill. So roughly in the area. Oh, it's staking the turrets, which is, um, poking the, the bottom end of them through the holes that we've drilled and on the bottom side or back side of the circuit board a little bit flange sticks out and I've got a little flared um, tool that I use and with a hammer and basically just tap that and it opens the flange and holds it in there like a rivet. Drop it into that hole and so the business end is in the hole and the flange end is sticking up. And then I'll hover my um, piece of circuit board over the top, find the hole that I uh, want to press it through, press it on. Then I take this uh, little flared end of a bolt that I made and insert that into the hole like so. And then when you tap it with the hammer, it doesn't take a whole lot. I just give it a couple of little wax and um, that flares that out and causes it to uh, become a permanent part of the board. It's definitely not coming out of there. No, it's flared pretty good. All right, so I will have this all staked out. It'll have all the turrets on it. Um, and then what I'll be doing is drilling out for the standoffs and mounting that in there to make sure it sits in there right. All right, well, we're going to wrap it up here this time, folks. This episode is a little shorter than the others since I spent most of episode three playing around with the EMB. 
but the real work never stopped. Craig got busy throughout the week getting the components mounted and soldered into place. And just look at the beautiful end result of his hard work. In our next episode, Craig shows off more of his handiwork in wiring up the preamp sockets and puts some finishing touches on the chassis rear panel. We also get started on the front panel graphics and finalize the layout for the controls. So that's it for this episode. Until next time. The Jerky's Machine, most entertaining channel you've ever seen. He's always making lots of interesting scenes for you to watch on YouTube.